do do short theme song intro. Hello, welcome to Left of the Box News Bites. Bonjour, bienvenue. I'm Sandy. I'm just going to put this out there. This video may be difficult to watch. If you are harmed by images of police violence, you may want to skip this one or hit mute and walk away so I can still get the view. Another encampment of 14 to 17 unhoused people was violently destroyed by dozens of officers and security guards at Lamport Stadium Park in Toronto on July 21st. There is footage of this, but quite honestly, I don't want to show it because it's too graphic. It shows officers attacking protesters unprovoked, shoving people to the ground, ripping tents apart, intimidating, escalating, and many of them seem to be eager for a fight. Cops have been getting more aggressive and brazen with their actions because there's been no consequences for what they've done. If you remove the uniform and badge from them, what they did is clearly criminal. But because of the state, they're given permission to do illegal actions, and people with that power tend to abuse it. If a cashier was told they're allowed to assault any customer that looks at them the wrong way, you'd be more likely to use the self-checkout. Like I said before, I'm not going to show any footage. You can find it online if you want to see for yourself. Catherine Ward on Twitter has an excellent thread that covers the events as they unfolded and she includes video. So what I'm going to do is go over a few photos of the crime scene. This tweet is from Wild Witch. Jamie was my safety buddy at Lamport. They heard me screaming and saw what was happening pictured below and were trying to get to me to make sure the police did not hurt me physically specific to my disability if arrested. And below she continues, I cannot physically have my arms behind me in cuffs. I have torn my rotator cuff twice and still have problems with my right shoulder. They were trying to protect me and this is what they did to them. In this photo you can see a woman in a wheelchair reaching out for her friend who has been pinned to the ground with their arms behind their back and a cop on top of them. This was not necessary. What on earth could they have done to provoke this sort of response? What threat were they? Who were they harming? This is traumatizing. This will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Who do we call when we actually need help, when we need to be protected? So many people now are afraid to call the police because of scenes like this. So what happens when we are really in trouble? Then there's this tweet from Jay. I was arrested earlier today for taking a picture of Toronto Police at Lamport Stadium using the sort of tactic that according to Toronto Police Department, they don't use. And there's a video here that I'm not going to show, but it says police chief says service does not use me. This that says police up there. And according to my education in anatomy, which was not much, but there is a song that I'm not going to start because it will be stuck in your head for the rest of the day. That is his knee on the person's head and neck. We've seen how this turns out and there is no reason for it. Even if this person was a threat and needed to be restrained, there are other ways of doing it than putting your knee on their throat. This can kill him. For what? For being at a protest? For trying to protect people who are houseless in an encampment? This level of violence? For that? This is inexcusable. Then there's this series of tweets started by Lorraine. She's quoting the mayor by saying the only way. Then she's quoting the Toronto police, least amount of force, appropriate force. Zoe responds to that by saying, anyone who votes for John Tory is voting for this. And down below is Ollie. And they say, this was me. And according to Tory, it was my fault. I f***ing hate you, John Tory. This photo is hard to look at. Just everything about it. From the way the police officer's hand is on their head, like that, pinning this person down. And what could they have possibly been doing to deserve this? The answer is nothing. The police officer did this because he wanted to. There are other ways to restrain people. There are other ways to block people off. 
there is no call for this sort of action. And for those of you wondering if they were hurt in this picture, as they stayed here, sadly, this sums it up. This level of violence over top of the level of violence of dismantling the encampment. When's it going to end? The next photo is, to me anyway, the most disturbing one, so I can understand if you just want to look away for a bit. From Chris, Toronto Police and City Officials Clear Lamport Stadium, and this was shot for the Canadian press. As you can see, it is a much larger male officer with his hand around the throat of a much smaller person. That sort of motion can kill them. And when I look at this, I just, I wonder, where is the compassion in any of these officers? How can you go to this encampment and see these people who are struggling to get by, who had to resort to living in a park, and not want to help them by supporting them and assisting them with what they need instead of just violently tearing things apart and throwing them in jail? That solves nothing. What does his friends and family say to him when they see this? Because they're going to see it. It's all over the place. How do they not sit down and talk to him about what he did? What if he has children? And at some point, again, the children are going to see this photo. How does he explain this to them? How does he explain that this was okay in the moment when it clearly wasn't? If I had a friend who did this, for any reason, I would sit down with them and tell them they have to own it and take responsibility. And if that means that they have to have charges pressed against them and go to court and go through that process, so be it. But then I would also want them to go into counseling because this sort of anger, this sort of rage and hatred that would make you want to do that needs to be dealt with because they can't be in a good place. And I would want my friend to be happy and I would never want them to do this again to anyone else. If this officer is not held accountable for what he did, it's only going to get worse. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, maybe they had to do this because it would be expensive to house that 14 to 17 people in the encampment and look after their needs. Well, I know where the money can come from. So this is Michael, and this is Christopher, the police officers I just featured. Michael's salary is $138,000, and Christopher's is nearly $166,000. That's where you get the money. Fire these two and put their salaries towards housing and supporting the people in the encampment. You'd have a lot of money left over even to put funds into police to do this sort of violence when we could be using the funds to help heal the community is outrageous. And Nahid kind of gets to the core of the issue in this tweet. Toronto's mayor just said the violence at Lamport Stadium two days ago was caused by protesters, but it is well documented that hundreds of police, forces and security surrounded the encampment residents at 6 a.m when no protesters were present. The gaslighting is unreal. What this tells me is that it was purposeful. The show of force was purposeful. They wanted to discourage other people from putting up tents in parks. And so they used this violence as a way to discourage others. That's not how you solve the problem. Not even close. And all that does is instill fear in the community of the police who are supposed to be protecting them. The amount of money spent that day on the officers and security guards could have helped so many people in the community, but John Tory wasn't interested in that. At a press conference the day after the altercation at Lamport Stadium, Mayor John Tory claimed he didn't see the footage of police violence when questioned by a reporter. This is one of two things. 
Either he is telling the truth, in which case he had to be purposely avoiding footage because it was plastered all over social media, and not being aware of an event like this in the city he runs makes him a horrible mayor. Or he has seen it and is lying, which makes him a horrible person. So what is it, John? Are you a horrible mayor or a horrible person? Probably both. This is one of the more accurate headlines I've seen about this story from Vice. Toronto cops say they did tremendous job after beating people, destroying homeless camp. Officers were filmed shoving, pepper spraying, and hitting people as they dismantled a park encampment of fewer than 20 people. 26 people were arrested. The following day, protesters went to 14 Division to demand the people who were arrested be released and they were pepper sprayed. Also worth noting, on July 20th, an encampment at Alexandria Park was also violently dismantled and nine people were arrested. A couple days after that, the park was closed due to a film shoot. Officials claim there's no connection between the two. Funny then, how that timing worked out. There are a couple parts of this story I feel are overlooked but are important to cover. When I was searching information, I came across tweets of people in support of the tactics the police used and the destruction of the encampment. I've removed the names of the people who tweeted these. And some people tweet inflammatory statements because they want to cause outrage and I don't want to give them the attention. I also don't want anyone who sees my video to go and harass them. It solves nothing. Twitter is not an ideal platform for the nuanced discussion needed. I'm covering these tweets, so if you come across someone in your life that feels the same way, you'll have a few tools on how to have a conversation with them. You have to change a person's emotions before you can change their mind, and any sort of attack pushes them to dig deeper into their stance. Here are the first two. Violence? A little overdramatic with your headline. Curious what your solution would be to remove people who are unlawfully occupying a space and refuse to leave. Would you open your backyard for them to relocate? And the second one, those who are playing armchair quarterback about what the city should be doing, what about it takes a village? Why don't you open up your home to the homeless? Yeah, it's what I thought. Both of these tweets have the element of, if it's such a big problem, why don't you take them in? Why don't you solve the problem? Why don't you let them pitch up a tent in your backyard? So if you're not willing to do that, then why should we have them in the park? It is no one person's responsibility to solve this problem. No one person can look after the needs of an unhoused person by providing them with shelter and the services they need. Most people, they may want to help, but are unequipped to do it. This is the government's responsibility. They're the ones that are supposed to be looking after people so they don't have to pitch tents and parks to live. The next two tweets. Good to see police officers doing their job. I don't think it's anywhere in a police officer's job description to assault people and provoke. Just saying. Those parks needed to be cleared and protesters were given more than fair warning to disband. Most of these homeless people need proper care so they can recover and get their lives back on track. And the second one, and there is the hidden truth. They were offered a roof over their head and they turned it down. Choosing to live in a park when given the option of a roof over their head means these people are not genuinely homeless, rather they are protesters engineering a confrontation. So both of these tweets are indicating that the people are choosing to be in the park. They were given other options, but nope, they, they dismissed it. They, they thumbed their nose at it. I, I don't think that's the right phrase, but it, you know what I mean. When that's not the case, I've made a couple other videos. You can go check them out. One is about this very specific issue. And the last video I did about extreme weather also goes over some of these issues where I explain why the offer of shelter from city officials may not be a good offer at all. If you are starving and somebody offers you a rotten apple to eat, that's not a choice. You say no to it because you are doing what's in your best interest to not get sick. People who live in the park are not there by choice. They are there because that is the least dangerous option for them. Plain and simple. 
at least if you know somebody who sounds like this first tweet here, it's important to stay patient because I don't know the tone, but the quotations, it kind of gives me an indication. But this is how you can talk to them by first agreeing with them. They say people need proper care so they can recover and get their lives back on track. Yeah, I agree. They do. This is not the way to do it. What they, what the police did is not the way to help these people. So it's a matter of getting to the root of the problem as to why people are there in the first place. It's a matter of offering shelter that is appropriate for them. And this whole idea that they're protesters engineering a confrontation, I think the police were doing a fine job of that when they showed up before there were ever any protesters on site. Then there's these tweets here. To all outraged people of Toronto, think about how you'd feel if this was the view in front of your home. Squatters, tents, needles, pee, feces, watch your step. Just general squalor. If this cleanup is not okay, then what is? Okay, I just need to stop there. This cleanup? You're referring to these people as trash. And then that kind of makes you trash. We have shelters, people choose not to use them. Again, we know why. You mean a city that's accessible, safe, and clean for all? A city where people follow the rules and don't have to step over needles and feces while strolling through a public space? Sign me up, Scotty. I am offended by his use of a Star Trek quote here when Star Trek was all about the socialism. Just saying. That, that they were living in an ideal world that I wish I could live in. And so him using... No. No. I am taking away his Star Trek card. That is... That is not okay. Anyway, we have rules for a reason. It's not inhumane to follow them. That that sentence doesn't even make sense. Of course, it's not inhumane to follow a rule. It's depending on how you enforce it is inhumane. That's, that's the issue. Not the following the rules. It's the enforcing how it's enforced. That's the problem. They were given a year's notice to leave. Okay, you don't know that actually. The people in that park specifically, you don't know when they were given notice. You don't even know how long they were there. So uh, citation needed, please. Offered hotel rooms and yet accused the police of evicting them. What about the kids who cannot use the park because of fear of needles on the ground? Okay, so the reason I group these three together is they all use the word needles. Not everyone who lives in an encampment, who is homeless, who is poor, who has mental health issues, are drug addicts. And this is where safe injection sites can also come in handy because then there wouldn't be discarded needles anywhere. Also, the idea of them just being dirty, defecating wherever they want, that's not necessarily the case. I'd like to know if any of these people were even at that park to know what kind of condition it was in, or if they're just making assumptions. And I know a lot of people say, well, they have to get clean so they can then deserve housing. And that's actually the opposite way of how it should work. People use drugs as an escape because they are hurting, because their reality is so bad they can't deal with it, and then they get addicted. And that is a whole other mess. For many of them, it started because they were in a bad situation. And the way to solve that is to first offer them stability, a safe place to go home. If you expect them to go through the trauma of getting clean, breaking the addiction, dealing with the trauma that led to the addiction without a stable place to go? How can you expect them to go through all of that with nothing at the end, but more of the same situation that brought them to that point in the first place? A stable home is needed for people to overcome their traumas, their issues, their addictions, their health issues, their mental health issues. Without some sort of stability, It'll never happen because the cause of the problems will still be there. And finally, this gem of a tweet. 
good if they want to continue to live in tents they can move up north into the woods they control decline what the city has offered because they want to be free to live where they want and make the parks a sh wow. no thank you taxpayers want their parks back first thing grammar please i know it's just a tweet but it's so much easier for me to read if you use proper sentences i don't under they control decline what the city that's that's yeah i have a pet peeve on twitter and it's improper grammar which i am probably screwing up right now as i'm speaking anyway the point that i wanted to get to at this tweet is this idea that if they just want a free place to stay they can move into the woods into the middle of nowhere no they can't the services they need the jobs they may have because some of these people probably have jobs the soup kitchens the the doctor's offices the counseling all of that happens within the city if they want to get their lives back on track and yeah they probably do they need to be in the city to curse them out to the middle of the woods what are they just going to hunt it solves nothing all it does is take it out of view the issues that led to them being in the park are the things that need to be solved first i want parks to be free for everyone to use as well so solve the problem of why they're there and then you have the parks for everyone to use taxpayers want their parks back yeah you know what the people in the encampment they pay taxes every time they buy something they pay taxes if they have a job they pay taxes they're taxpayers too and do you know what those taxpayers want housing just health care that's what they want they want the government to do their job as difficult as it is a lot of the times when you see these statements on twitter it's important to not necessarily jump to conclusions as to what people mean. It's hard to tell inflections. It's hard to tell intent. And I would much rather live in a world where we give people a benefit of doubt. Maybe they don't know the full story. Maybe they are seeing a small sliver of the story thanks to our media. There is a whole bunch of reasons why they could have tweeted those things that are not necessarily bad. And this is why I'm saying Twitter is not an ideal platform for this. You need to talk to the people in your life that may feel this similar and have a conversation with them and try to find points where you agree, but then explain how it can be dealt with better. It's important to stay patient and practice the same compassion we want them to have. Some people don't know all the layers involved. Other people are hurting and lash out at the visible symptom, thinking people are trying to take advantage of the system instead of focusing on the people in control of the system who benefits from their pain. We live in a world where we can play by all the rules and still lose. And finally, there is this tweet pointing out something that needs to be talked about. From Jennifer Evans, check out the disturbing U.S. military-style flag insignias of this private security guard. I circled it here and found this image to give you a close-up view of what this badge is. A thin blue line badge representing U.S. and Canadian solidarity. This is one of the reasons I'm pushing so hard for more cross-border solidarity between leftists. The right already has it. They even have it branded. We share all the same issues, and they stem from the same system of patriarchy, colonialism, racism, capitalist greed, corrupt governments, and so on. Our countries are tied together in every way possible. If you see something horrendous happening in the States, it's only a matter of time before it happens here. And, as we've seen in the States, with little accountability for cops at protests, they got more violent and people were killed as a result. My biggest fear about the encampments is that it won't be long before a cop kills someone during the dismantling of one of them. We can't allow this to continue. John Tory, who definitely is not a vampire because the silver spoon in his ass is not causing him any discomfort, needs to resign as mayor. We need to pressure him to step down no matter where you live.
The people responsible for the system need to be held accountable for the harm it has caused. Defund the police. Put that money towards healing the community. If you are part of an activist group or passionate about an issue, reach out to your cross-border counterparts and coordinate your efforts. State violence won't be stopped on one side and not the other. It has to happen at the same time. I cannot change the world, but we can. Okay, some updates. I'm moving next month. Yay! So I have to spend time packing and this will take an emotional toll on me. So my videos may be fewer in between than normal. Kind of like this one. But once I'm settled, I'm going to make a renewed commitment to getting more videos out. The next video I want to make will be another update on Bill C-10. We may be in the clear for now. You'll find out why when I publish the video. I have a couple exciting interviews being set up, so keep an eye out for that. And a reminder, when I get to over a thousand subscribers to my channel, I will attempt live streaming. I'm still not sure what that will look like. I'm not much of a gamer, and I don't think watching me play Free Cell or Mahjong would be all that interesting. But I very much want to be able to interact with you. I can only talk to myself for so long before I get bored with the conversation. It's to the point I can predict what I'm going to say. And after my move, my living expenses will be going up. If you can, please sign up to be a patron. Every little bit helps. Link in the description box below. A big thanks to my current patrons. They enjoy my videos and want me to make more. And I enjoy making my videos and having patrons helps me to make more. So it's a win-win arrangement. Follow me on Twitter so you can see what I spit out when I'm not thinking ahead. Like this video and share widely. In the description box, let me know what you would like to see on my live stream that is TOS friendly. Salut, à la prochaine. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm Sandy, wishing your tomorrow is better than your today.